All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Kirsten and on behalf of the Newark Museum of Art, welcome to our Community Day Carnival. We are so excited to be celebrating with you all day long at home. Um, what do you think of when you think of Carnival? We want you to share with us your experiences and your traditions. You can tell us in the chat and in the comments. Some of you might be thinking of costumes and masks, and if you are, perfect timing because we have two very special guests with us today. We are joined by Mirta and Davide from Can La Cana in Italy, and they are gonna be sharing with us the story behind the Venetian carnival and the mask making tradition. Welcome. If you have any questions throughout today's presentation and you need to know more, feel free to use the chat and comment below. Uh, this presentation is presented with closed captions, so please turn them on if you would like to see them. And we want to thank you and take it away, Mirta and Davida. Tell us all about this lovely tradition. Oh. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Kamakana. In Kamakana, we make masks and uh, uh, I'm Mirta and uh, I'm here with uh, Davide. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> we are in the Kamakana workshop. That's to say the place where our masks are designed and, uh, and created. Uh, let's talk a little bit in this, um, in this talk, uh, we, will be, uh, we will be telling you about uh, uh, how we make our masks in the traditional way. We will be talking about the tradition of the carnival and we will be showing you the most important masks uh, of the Venetian tradition. And uh, so Kamakana started its business. Uh, sorry. Okay. So Kamakana, sorry, <laughs> a technical problem. Uh, Kamakana started its business in 1984 and we are located in the in the very center of the city uh, of Venice. Sorry, um, um, our masks are uh, uh, we are well known for many different reasons because our masks are completely handmade according to the ancient tradition, according to the ancient Venetian craft, and we are also known because we have been working with. Uh, uh, theaters and directors. Probably the most famous one is uh, Stanley Kubrick for the movie Ice White Shut. And uh, as you may know, <laughs> normally in this period we would be celebrating Carnival. This is the first time that uh, um, this won't be happening after many years in Venice. The, the origins of the Venetian Carnival, which is uh, one of the most famous one along with the uh, Rio de Janeiro Carnival and the one in New Orleans uh, dates back to the Middle Ages. While the modern carnival, the, the, the new carnival uh, has uh, it started its uh, celebrations uh, about 40 years ago. Um, the new carnival, the, the carnival, the modern carnival uh, uh, is, um, is a, it was, it's like a revival of the oldest one that the city started, uh, the city started to di discover the antique traditions in the 80s. And uh, with these traditions, we also, in the city, we started also again an antique craft. That's to say the craft of the mask making. Uh, the mask maker explored the, the, the old customs and uh, they started to make the mask uh, again. And the mask maker become, became a very, a very a, important, another time, a very important uh, professional figure in the city. And this is exactly what happened to Kamakana. So we would like to show you how our masks are made. Uh, to create a mask, we need to start creating what we call a positive mold. Basically, it's a sculpture and it's made of clay. The gentleman you see in this picture is Mario Belloni. Mario is the founder of Kamakana and he is the artist who creates uh, all the masks that we have in the shops uh, and in our workshops. 
uh, this part of the work uh, is the most uh, artistic one because Mario just using his hands uh, and a very simple tool needs to put here you see a very simple wooden tool needs to put uh, the, his vision his idea in the clay or he needs to bring out of the clay his idea it depends on how we <laughs> we we vision it Anyway, uh, when Mario is uh, happy with his, uh, with his creation, this part of the work can also take a very long time because Mario needs really to be happy with uh, his uh, sculpture. And uh, uh, when this, this happens, we start pouring the plaster, as you can see here, on top of our positive mold. We need to let the first layer set for some minutes and then when the plaster will be thicker, we start shaping it. We want to model our uh, positive, uh, our negative mold, sorry, in the shape uh, of a shell, as you see here. After 90 minutes, about 90 minutes, our plaster will be completely hardened. And so we can separate what we call the positive from the negative. Here we are. We don't need our positive anymore, so we, don't, we won't be using our sculpture anymore. We just need the, the negative. And now we're ready to go to the next step of our work of art. That's to say, we, we start creating our mask. Also for the mask, we don't need a lot of materials. We just need some paper, some water, and some glue. The glue is a mixture of PVA glue and wallpaper glue. While the paper is very important for us, we use a paper which is called the cartalana wool paper because uh, it's made of recycled fibers of wool and uh, it has a very good quality for us. It doesn't shrink when it dries and in the end our mask will be flexible and resistant at the same time. So we need to moist the paper to cover it with glue. And then we're ready for the next step. We need to uh, break the paper in pieces, as you see here. And then uh, we go back to our negative and we start filling in it in uh, with the paper. Uh, we start from the outline, as you see here. We want to press very well each piece of paper uh, so that uh, in the end uh, they will be all together. And uh, we need also to put uh, one piece will go on top of the other one. And uh, we need to do this, uh, not just with one layer of paper. For example, for this uh, size of mask, which is it's a human face and it's uh, less or more the, uh, the size of a real face, we will need to put four or five layers of paper in the mold. The size of the mold can change. And according to the size of the mold, also the number of layers can change. I will show you something more later. Anyway. When we are done with our layers, we need to wait for about 24 hours. After this time, the mask will be dry, and so we can extract it from the mold, as, as you see here. Of course, uh, our mold, uh, we will be using it many times, as you see from the many masks that there are in our, in our picture. And uh, we're not done yet. We say that our mask is blind because the eyes are closed. So we need to open the eyes with a cutter, and uh, the mask will look uh, like the one you see here. If we want, we can also uh, uh, open the nostrils so it will be easier to breathe. We are not done yet. We need uh, to paint the mask with a white coat uh, of, uh, of paint. And now our all this work and we have uh, a white mask. The white mask is ready for all the following decorations. Now in front of us, uh, we have uh, an uh, an ending number of different possibilities because really we can do we can use anything to decorate our mask uh, a lot of materials and of course our imagination our creativity for example in this picture uh, our colleague fiorella is using just the black and white so it uh, the mask is very simple in a way. We can also decide uh, that we want to mix uh, different techniques uh, on just one mask. For example, on this mask, uh, we have the decoupage, the painting. We have also the gold leaf, which is a very typical Venetian technique. And uh, since we wanted to add some extra uh, volume to our mask, we also decorate it with a three-dimensional stucco that uh, when it, it will dry it with the with a three-dimensional effect on top. Um, I would like to show you, oh no, let's, let's wait. Let's go a little bit further with the masks. So in, 
we cannot we can also decide not to paint the mask we can decide to decorate them with cloth so for example we can use silk we can use satin and we can also add some trimming some uh, swarovski stone and of course the feathers also the work with the feather is all handmade the feathers are bended they are uh, uh, they are painted with different colors and uh, there are some masks that are we could define them uh, jewel mask. For example, on this one, we have the blue satin, we have the trimming, the Swarovski stones, uh, and all the peacock feathers that have been hand cut it uh, and cut, sorry, uh, one by one. Um, as I was saying before, the mask can have any shape and size. They can be created to be worn, but they can also be created for decoration. So they are uh, a sculpture. They can be used uh, uh, during parades uh, or in theater, as I was saying before. And uh, as you see here, they can they can really uh, uh, simply, they are a work of art created by the, the artist who wants to share his vision in a mask. Uh, let me show you, I have here with we have here with us some of the mask, uh, the finished the mask that they have been showing. For example, this cat is the one that you saw before that uh, my colleague was decorating. You can see how it looks like when it's done. Another one, this uh, tragedy and comedy, so black and white and the gold leaf. Okay, this one uh, you hold it with the stick, so it's very easy to wear. And I have also a feather mask, which is here. So here we are on this one, we have the red uh, satin, the feathers, and so on. Well, um, sorry, David is helping me. Okay, um, so I was saying the mask making uh, is an antique tradition and our masks are, are made according to the antique tradition. I would like to, I would like to take you to the mask maker workshop of the past. Here we are in 17th century. Uh, if, you, if you see, there are many different shapes of mask hanging on the wall. The mask maker is working on a mask. Uh, this noble is uh, choosing, probably is pointing one mask. And uh, you can see also the tools. Here we have a mold, which is similar to the one that I have in the back. Uh, and if you notice, there is just one mask on the counter. This mask is the most important for the Venetian tradition. It's the most special mask of the Venetian tradition, and it's called the La Bauta, B-A-U-T-A. -A. This mask is really the symbol of the city of Venice in a way. Uh, Bauta probably for the German, from the German word behüten, that means to hide and to protect. So I've been, I've been saying mask, but actually this is not uh, just a mask. La Bauta was an outfit. Uh, and I would like to show you to you uh, live in a way. Okay, so Davide will be helping us with this uh, part. La Bauta was made of three different pieces. The first one, originally this was La Bauta, the lower part was lace, very precious, and uh, this one had a very important uh, uh, reason. So wearing it, as you can see, Davide will start uh, hiding his hair, his neck, and the part of his face. Then on the face, they would put the mask. This was originally called Il Volto, the face, because it really was the face of the person wearing it. And if you notice, no ribbons, no holes because they wouldn't tie the mask. The mask was uh, kept together by the third part of our outfit. That's to say the tricorn hat. Okay, so now we don't have here Davide anymore. Uh, we have La Signora Maschera. Davide is completely hiding his identity. If we were to meet another person wearing the mask, they would simply say one to the other, Buongiorno Signora Maschera, good morning to the mask, no matter who they were. And if you check this, the shape of the mask, you see uh, it's pushing on his forehead and it's rather comfortable. So Davide, you see, he has a lot of space. So he's, he can, of course, breathe. We don't want him not to breathe, but he could also, while wearing it, he could also eat, drink. If he wanted, we are not sure that if he would like it, he could even smoke his pipe, as you see in our, let's go back to the, to the camera. Okay, so the Venetian would really do 
everything while wearing the mask. If you check uh, uh, the, the gentleman on the right here, the mask uh, has a shape that will fit perfectly on the top of the tricorn head, like this, okay? So when they didn't want to wear it, they could simply put it on top of their head. Um, the Venetians would wear la bauta not just during carnival, they could wear it in their everyday life. Uh, to give an idea, in 1700, uh, they could start wearing it on the 5th of October, and they would wear it for the following six months. It was a way to protect their identity, to be free to go everywhere without being recognized. And uh, the carnival would start on the 26th of December, so it used to be very long if compared to nowadays. And... Um, mm, the, with the season, with the starting of the carnival in Venice would also start the season of the theaters and of the state-owned casinos. Here we are in Il Ridotto. Il Ridotto was one of the many casinos of Venice, of the state-owned casino, because they were legal, they were part of, they were owned by the state. And uh, what was interesting about the Venetian's casino, if you wanted to play, to gamble, you were not allowed to wear a mask. So it was a way, again, a, a way of protecting the identity of the people gambling, maybe winning, but also maybe losing uh, money. So it was a way to preserve the privacy of the people. Uh, the, the bauta was so normal for the Venetian that they would wear uh, everywhere. It was also called uh, l'abito d'uso, the usual clothes. So for the Venetian, it was normal to go to the cafe to, to drink a coffee while wearing la bauta, to, to chat, to walk in the city while wearing it. It was so popular that it was used also at the highest level of the society. It was used also in the most important place, we could say, for the Venetian Republic. That's to say, uh, the Republic of Venice was ruled by the Doge, who was like the, the governor of the city. And uh, the, the house, the home of the Doge was uh, Il Palazzo Ducale. This is a political celebration that took place every year in the city. In the background, we have the Doge who is meeting the different ambassadors coming from the different countries. While here in the, for, in the uh, foreground, you can see we have all the noble people, or probably the most important people in the city. And uh, while attending a political celebration, they are all wearing the mask. So the mask was really something uh, uh, unique and at the same time uh, normal for the Venetian. Uh, the mask was also a social equalizer. All the different classes were allowed to wear the mask. And with the mask on, all the Venetian had to be considered on the same level. On this fresco, we have uh, a rich person, a noble, while on the other side, we have a worker, a person of a lower class. And uh, you can see, probably can just buy the cheapest part of the outfit. That's to say, il volto, the mask. But with the mask on, in this moment, they are on the same level. Um, the mask was used uh, starting from 1700. Also, the ladies were allowed to wear it in Venice. It was uh, really something that would make uh, all the people on the same level, and it would give a lot of freedom, especially, for example, to the ladies who were free uh, to go everywhere, for example, without being recognized. Uh, talking about freedom, the freedom, the breaking of the, the rule breaking is part, uh, is, is, is really part uh, of the carnival. And the, the carnival was really part of the carnival today, but also of the carnival of the past. Um, the, the antique carnival had some masks that were typical. Uh, probably the most famous one is uh, Il Mattaccino. Matto in Italian means uh, the crazy one, the full one. So uh, the Mattaccino was uh, the crazy one. And uh, you see he's wearing a very colorful outfit, an outfit that of course uh, is, uh, is typical of the mood of the carnival. And uh, is, this person is also wearing a mask also if it's difficult to tell. And I show you it's this one. So you can see that it was cut on the mouth because uh, what would the Mattaccino do? The Mattaccino would practically prank the Venetians. So you have to imagine all the noble Venetians strolling in the city, having fun, wearing their masks. But uh, this uh, fun was uh, disturbed by the Mattaccino. 
And uh, what would he do? You can see that here in his lap, he has some eggs. Luckily, those were not uh, real eggs, but they were eggs filled with perfume. And the Mattachino would literally bomb the people, the Venetians, with the eggs. You see, he would even use a sort of elastic band to throw the eggs even farther and quicker. And uh, this mask was so popular that another mask was born after it. And uh, it's uh, the egg seller that you can see here on the right. Uh, so the Mattachino would probably finish his eggs very quickly, so he would need uh, quickly some other. And uh, this mask at a certain point became a social problem. There were too many Mattachinos. And so the first law in the city of Venice created for a mask, it was about the Mattachino. So the Republic had to create a, a law to forbid uh, this mask. Can you imagine? So a mask which is so popular that you need to try to stop it. Uh, so we say, we see this mask was an example of uh, um, excess of craziness in a way. And we have another mask, which is typical of the carnival, which is an example of a mask that uh, uh, gave uh, extreme freedom to the people wearing it. This mask is called La Niaga. Uh, I show it to you. We have it here and it's this one. Okay. Can you see it? the shape of it. Okay, so Lagnaga was originally used by men who wanted to dress up as women. Of course, they were not uh, uh, faithful, so they were uh, more uh, a, a mocking uh, lady while wearing this mask. You can see the person wearing it now, he didn't even shave, so he's wearing his beard, like, uh, so he didn't want to to hide that he is a man in this moment. And um, while wearing the mask, the, the, the man wearing it would uh, imitate ladies in a way, but they would talk with the squeaky voice, with the girlish voice. They would even uh, imitate the cats. So probably the name Nyaga comes from the, in, in, in Venice, the cat uh, makes Nyau. So probably Nyaga is from this. Uh, with time, this mask became uh, the mask that the homosexuals would use during the carnival. Uh, homosexuality was uh, forbidden in Venice and all over Europe, and it was also punished with death. But while wearing a mask in Venice, you could do whatever you, you wanted. You could not be arrested. So this mask, La Niaga, created a sort of loophole in the Venetian law, and uh, the men were free to be whomever they wanted, at least uh, during carnival. We could say that this, uh, that the Nyagas were the drag queens uh, of the Venetian Republic. Of course, uh, this was not politically correct. We cannot think that the, the carnival uh, of the past was something politically correct. It was really a moment of total freedom. Uh, of uh, It was also a moment of social relief because people could be uh, some, someone else, uh, at least for uh, a for some time. The Venetian Carnival uh, was important for this because it was a moment of, uh, of extreme freedom. And uh, in fact, the Venetian never, start, never stopped celebrating it, not even during wars or during the, the plague epidemics. Uh, at the same time, the Venetian Carnival had also another important meaning. It had uh, a very strong uh, political meaning. Uh, the Republic of Venice uh, was very powerful. It was an empire and it was really big. It would uh, reach uh, the, the Middle East. And uh, so the Republic was really strong and powerful. The Carnival was uh, a moment in which the city would send the messages, a message, sorry, to the other countries, to the possible enemies. In a way, we are powerful, we are strong. Don't mess with us, we could say. And uh, at the same time, uh, it was a way also to send a message inside the city. Uh, so it was a, a way of making all the Venetians to feel proud of being part of the city, a, a message of unity to all the Venetians of all the different classes. The Venetians would work the whole year to be ready for the carnival, and they would uh, exercise because they, um, they would do a lot of uh, physical uh, uh, preparation. They would also do, build, do a lot of building. For example, you can check this, check this floating shell that you see here in which uh, all the most important Venetian people could uh, uh, attend the carnival celebrations. 
Um, the most important part of the celebrations of the carnival uh, would start uh, on the Giovedi Grasso on the Shrove Thursday, and uh, they would uh, all be made uh, in the heart of the city, in the center, in the most important part of the city. That's to say, Piazza San Marco, San Marco Square. The square was the center of the political uh, power and the religious power because we have the Palazzo Ducale and we have uh, the cathedral, the San Marco Cathedral. And uh, here all the people would gather to celebrate the carnival. As I was saying, all the shows uh, were very muscular in a way. They were uh, very physical. Uh, one of the most famous one was uh, Il Volo del Turco, the flight of the Turkish person, of the Turkish man, sorry. And we, you can see it here on the, on the left. Basically, it was uh, an acrobat uh, that would climb to the top of the tower bell. Consider that the, the tower was uh, 99 meters high. So this was really challenging and, danger, and dangerous. Once the acrobat got to the top of the tower, Another rope would connect the top of the tower with the window from where the doge was uh, watching this, uh, ceremony, this uh, all these shows. The doge was like the personification of the republic. Okay, so it was really um, the, the the most uh, meaningful person for the Venetian Republic. The, um, the acrobat would slip through the rope and they would reach the doge. He would pay homage to him. He would give, give him uh, some flowers. Uh, he would tell him a poem. So this was a way of all the people of Venice uh, to pay their homage uh, to the doge. At the same time, there were a lot of other shows uh, in the piazza. For example, you can see here we have uh, Le Forze d'Hercule, Hercules strength. These were human pyramids. And th these are also typical of, for example, of Spain, the Castel uh, are, very, are very popular too. And um, this, the, the Venetians would really train the whole year to perform these pyramids. They had different names according to the shape. They were always more elaborate, more, uh, more challenging. At the same time, uh, in uh, another showing off of strength was uh, the bull fight. Uh, so uh, the youngest Venetian would uh, fight in the square. They would uh, fight with the bulls, uh, as you can see here. And this also was a way of the Venetians to show their strength. It was a way to send a message. We are strong, we are ready to fight. And uh, at the same time in the square, there were also the building that you can see here that were called the machines, le macchine. Uh, the, they were uh, wood buildings and they were uh, also this, they were built every year in the square during the carnival. And uh, the Venetians had a way of saying, uh, they would say, my uguali, never the same, because uh, mm, because they wanted to show that the Republic was uh, 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 always richer and stronger and wealthier. So every year also the machines had to be different. They would be more elaborate uh, as the pyramids that you can see here, for example. And, uh, it, and then the, the, um, the machines were used to shoot the fireworks, as you see here. So can you imagine the square crowded with people, the fireworks, the acrobats, the people watching? So it was uh, uh, really something uh, we could say dangerous for if we think about it in our times, but at the same time, it was also something that would uh, generate uh, amazement and wonder in the people watching them. And uh, what's better than uh, to, to create this wonder than bringing in the, in the heart of the city, the wild animals. <clears throat> so here you can see a rhino while uh, you see people wearing masks are watching it. This is a painting of uh, 1700 by uh, Longhi. Thank you, Davide. And uh, so not only the rhino, but also the elephant. So the message was clear. Uh, we are strong, we are powerful, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, ready to fight, uh, we are fit, okay, because we can perform uh, any kind of different, uh, of dif of different uh, show, we can, um, we can fight. 
And uh, in the latest period of the carnival, another tradition started. You probably know this mask, which is very sim symbolical, the plague doctor. <clears throat> so uh, the plague doctor was uh, created in 1500 and it was used uh, all over Europe during the plague, the plague pandemic. Uh, the, the mask was a way in attempt to try not, not to get the outfit, I would say more than the mask, was a way to try not to get sick. So the, the plague doctor would wear the, the cloak that you see here that was completely sealed with wax. Then he would wear the mask. The mask, uh, the eyes were closed with glass and inside the beak they would put uh, herbs, perfume, different stuff to try to clean the air, to filter the air. At the same time, they thought that the plague was brought by a sort of evil spirits that were floating in the air. So uh, the plague doctor was also had to be very scary because it had to scare the spirits so they wouldn't enter the, it, his body. Uh, during the, the, the carnival, this mask, uh, the Venetians started to use this mask for a completely different reason. So it was, uh, the, the, can you imagine seeing all the people wearing the, the plague doctor mask roaming around the city. It was made in an ironical way, because, but it was also a way to exorcise the fear, the scare, the lingering, we can say, fear of, uh, of disease and also of death. And it was also a way to remember to the Venetians that the carnival was going to end after two months of uh, uh, drinking, uh, eating, uh, uh, gambling in the casino, uh, throwing, uh, eggs throwing, whatever you can think. It was uh, uh, just after carnival, a completely different moment would start. According to the Catholic tradition, uh, the 40 days after carnival are the length. So the, the, the 40 days before for Easter, in which people uh, are supposed to be praying and fasting. So the doctor would uh, remember, remind to the people that uh, carnival was going to end. The last day of the carnival, all the Venetians would uh, gather in the big square in the Piazza San Marco, and uh, they would all wear a mask. And uh, you have to imagine the music would play, they would all, and they would all patiently wait for the midnight. At midnight, the, the, the clock tower would ring the bell, the music would stop, and they would all take off the mask because the carnival was over and they had to start, as I was saying, a completely different period. Okay, that's it on, my, on our side. Uh, we, this was a very quick uh, overview of the carnival and of the Venetian tradition of masks. Um, I hope it was, we hope it was useful for you and we would like to thank you for attending. We, do, we would also like to thank you the New York Museum for uh, giving us the chance to be uh, with you today. And uh, now we will be happy to answer to your question if you have. Yes, thank you so much. That was such a lovely presentation. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but I need to go into a deep dive and learn more about Venetian history. That's so fascinating, all of it. Um, and I think the whole mask uh, and being liberating definitely speak to us in this new mask world, you know? I guess that just speaks to history, things that are in trend come back around. Um, we did have a few questions about, um, first and foremost, uh, could you translate the name of your organization for some of the Americans out there? What does Kamakana mean? Okay, no, I, I can answer this because I am, as I say, personally related <laughs> to, to that. Uh, Kamakana uh, cannot be translated for, uh, in reality because it's the acronym of the, the um, initial two uh, letters of the four names of the four founders of the of the organization, so they were Carlo, um, Mario, uh, Carolina, and Antonella, who gather in the in the eighties. There were two couples. Two of them are my parents today, <laughs> and 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 so they 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 founded this uh, the, the, this workshop and the um, this this C A at the at the beginning the K with the apostrophe. 
um, resemble the, the names that ancient palaces and houses have here in Venice. So ca as casa, casa as house. So, uh, like, you know, like in Game of Thrones, you have the <laughs> house Tark, the house that, so ca macan. <laughs> and, and so the, the, there was an ironic name that they, they came out with in 35, 36 years ago. And, and then then remained. <laughs> so that's that's the, the the story of the name. Great, thank you so much. I love that. Um, we had a question from Richard. Oh, what if a mask wearer needed to wear some glasses at the same time as wearing their that's, mask? That's a big problem that we perfectly understand. <laughs> being <laughs> glass wearer, uh, the the problem is that you need to have a certain model of mask, and these are very few that allow you to wear the mask uh, behind or be even better on the mask. So like a long nose mask on which you can put your glass on. But the, it's a very limited number of masks and we have to think about the, the, the past times where glasses were not so common and they were used just to, to, to read books or to read written text, not to see very far away. So then, then there, there is not a, a, an easy solution to, to that problem. Hey, thank you. Uh, Liz is asking about those beautiful squares that um, those structures you had in the square. Is there still that tradition? Are they still being built in the square? And not really, and this is a PC. They, they could think about rebuilding something like that. Um, but uh, we also must think that mm, they wouldn't respect the, you know, the, the safe rules we, we have today <laughs> because they were uh, enormous, gigantic building that they wanted to, to set on fire uh, um, in, in the middle of the crowd. So this, this would, re would be really dangerous today. <laughs> okay, we have something like this at the Burning Man Festival in the, in, you know, in the US. But no, the, the, there is nothing like that here. Also because, uh, because all those buildings around the, the square, around the piazza became very important monuments. They didn't perceive that as a, as a, as a monument at that time, but now it would be impossible to put them in danger uh, with, with fire. <laughs> Understandable, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you two have a favorite mask? I know it must be hard to choose, but do you? Well, personally, I really like the, the, the um, ancient masks, uh, the, the traditional one, like the ones we, we have spoken a lot about, so the Bauta. But also, yeah, I mean, maybe... Yeah, <laughs> mine is probably the Plague Doctor. It's also very... <laughs> you know, yeah, it's connected to the... To the, to the moment, to we, the are moment we are living. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, and uh, anyway, it's, uh, it is very... It's scary and it's, uh, it has a lot of meaning. So I think it's probably the most, uh, my favorite one. <laughs> Beautiful. And it's such a work of artistry too, just the physics between, you know, the weight of that. Uh, we have another American mask maker. Welcome, Eric. Uh, the wool paper is hard to find in his experience. Do you have suggestions for alternatives? The, or maybe some some kind of uh, raw absorbent paper you would use in uh, yeah you would find in the hardware store. But I was in the U.S. Um, in Long Island a few years ago, and I was hosted in a school to to teach how to to make make masks, and it was really impossible to find uh, something similar to to the wool paper. It, will, it is possible to use any kind of paper, even, even you know, um, toilet paper, for example, <laughs> even though it's, it's very soft, or uh, you can use newspaper paper, but none uh, has the, the perfect characteristics of the wool paper. And this is really hard to find outside Europe, and I would say outside Italy. There is only one big producer of that, and of this kind of paper and so it's kind of hard on the internet you find it but it's really really expensive i know i, I know it for for experience so it was easier for me to uh, ship this paper to the us to, for my students than to to, to find some something similar there 
Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask you a two-part question. Uh, on average, how many masks do you make per year for Carnival? And <laughs> is there a best-selling one that's the most popular? Okay, so um, it's really hard to, to come, out, come out with a number, uh, with a precise number. Uh, I would say thousands, okay? And uh, but it's difficult to to say the um, to say it because it really changes from one year to the other. Uh, Carnival has not a fixed period in the year; it depends on Easter. So it also also Carnival can be in January, can be in February, can ends in March. So when it's in March, uh, there is ma a lot more people, ma much more people coming to to Venice. So of course we we sell and we make more masks. But also, um, there are there are years that, for no reason apparently, even in January, there are so many people. Although it's really cold here, and we are near to the you know uh, close to the Christmas um, season, so people already already had their their vacation uh, during that season. But so it, it, I, let let okay, I give you the. Uh, Six thousand masks, okay, as an average, okay, in the uh, 15, 20 days of carnival time. Wow, that okay. is incredible. <laughs> um, we, we produce, we make masks for the all year round because uh, we we work also with cinema, with the um, other with parties for example for halloween now we started in the last years to work a lot because we sell on the internet so there are so many people all over the world that can have once our mask for celebrating another kind of tradition but it, which is also uh, connected to to masks it's based on masks as well absolutely um we i wish we could get to all of these questions everyone is so interested i love the excitement we have and please make sure that you are engaging with them we dropped the link to their website into the chat um, mm -hmm. i'm going to take one more question because we're just about out of time um, but do you know of any other um history of mask wearing and culture in the other parts of Italy, such as Rome or Naples? Uh, not really, because the other carnivals are, are kind of different. And today, carnival is celebrated maybe more in, in uh, Switzerland or in Germany, some, in some areas of Spain than in Italy. Uh, we completely lost this tradition in, in Italy, apart from Venice and uh, a small town in, um, in Tuscany, which, which is called Viareggio. Uh, but, and other minor carnivals in, in small cities and, and towns. But the, the only real big carnival and big organization in Italy is in Venice. Uh, I, I would suggest people to, to check the um, carnival in, in Cologne, in Germany, because there, there is really, really a, another kind of tradition, but it's a very lively tradition, alternative to the ones in Venice, but still uh, something something mm, unique in a sense. Absolutely. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us. That was such a pleasure. And I had just such a great time learning about the history and seeing the craftsmanship. Um, so thank you so much for joining with us. This was so special. Um, for all of our, yes, for all of our viewers who are also feeling inspired, um, please go ahead and use the links that we dropped in the chat to make your very own Venetian mass tradition. We have it in three languages for you to follow along, get some inspired, put your own twist onto this awesome tradition. Um, are you hungry for some more carnival? Because we have way more programs going up and in the spirit of globalization, we are gonna have um, performances inspired by Brazilian carnival. We were just in Italy. So we are keeping this party going. Um, we are going to have an awesome cooking demonstration with Auntie Wendy. You can click the links in the chat to continue your um, engagement in this day. Community Day is presented by Horizon Foundation for New Jersey. And so we want to give a thank you to them. And also a thank you to you all for joining us. Um, for everyone around the world, we couldn't do these programs without you. Um, if you enjoyed today's program, I hope you consider making a donation or becoming a member of the museum so that we can continue to bring more of this amazing content into your homes. Um, thank you everyone again. Happy thank Carnival. You. And again, thank you, thank you to Merte and David. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.